This is sort of a classic uh, question in electricity and magnetism, and it's how do you find the electric field due to this charged rod, and why would you want a charged rod? Uh, well, let's not talk about that just now. But you could. I mean, even if I electrically charge this pin, it could act like a charged rod, and then I could calculate the electric field due to that. So in this case, I have a rod of length L and a total charge Q, and that, that charge is spread uniformly over here. Because if it's not uniform, then we, then we can't do this. And I'm going to find an expression for the electric field uh, along an axis perpendicular to the rod and in its middle. So if I center the rod here at the origin, then this would be on the x-axis. That's where we want to find that electric field. Okay, so let's just recall uh, how we would do this and, and start with the electric field due to a point charge. So if I have, let's say, a single point right here, a single charge, and I want to find the electric field uh, right there. So this is Q, and then I can call this R1 for the location of that charge, or RQ, call whatever you want, and I could call this RO for the location of the observation location. Then I can find the electric field due to that single charge, but I have to first find this vector R. So in that case, R would be the from the charge to the point of location, so this would be RO minus R1. And then the electric field due to that single charge would be this, E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over the magnitude of R squared times the unit vector R hat. So I don't want to go over this in too much detail because I've done it before, but that's the electric field due to a point charge. You do have to find the unit vector uh, R hat, and you have to find the magnitude of the vector R after first finding the, the vector R. Uh, but I could do that. I could get the vector value. Now, what if I have more than one charge? What if I have another charge over here? Well, this would be an electric field E1 down there, and here's charge 2, Q2, Q1. This would make an electric field like that, and then the total would be the sum of that. So I don't know how to calculate the electric field due to a rod, but I do know how to calculate the electric field due to a whole bunch of point charges. So I'm going to break this into a whole bunch of point charges and calculate the electric field due to each charge. Let's just take one random charge, and I'm going to break this into a little piece like that. See, it's in green. So that's my, it's not actually a point charge because it's too big, but I want to find the electric field due to this piece right there, okay? So <clears throat> let's say this has a charge. It's not the total charge, it's just a piece of charge. I'm gonna call this uh, DQ, right? Because it's a differential charge because I'm gonna break this into a finite, well, break this into a number of pieces and then let the piece size goes to zero, take the sum of the electric fields due to each of these pieces, and as the piece size goes to zero, I get an integral. And that's the whole point here. So that's a, a charge location DQ. Here, I'm gonna, that's at a location Y, and then I have my X is the location of my charge. Okay, so there's my charge DQ. Let's just do exactly what we did before. Let's do the same thing we had up here. I wanna find this vector R. So the first thing I need is the location of that charge right there. So let's say R1 vector is going to be 0, Y, 0, right? Because it's on the x-axis. It's not in the z direction at all. So if I just move up right there, I'd get that. And then the location of my observation, RO, is going to be x, 0, 0. And from that, I can find the vector R. So R is going to be RO minus R1, which is going to be pretty easy. It's x minus 0, 0 minus y, so I get negative y, 0 minus 0 is 0. So that's my, my vector. Uh, <clears throat> now, I'm going to need to uh, find the magnitude of that because this has the magnitude. So this is going to be equal to R magnitude is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, what about r hat? 
So this is going to be in the x and the y direction. So I'll have a vector like this, e. Now I'm going to actually call this de. So de, I can write this as dex, dey, 0. There's going to be a 0 y component. Now let's just go ahead and use a quick trick to make the whole thing simpler. I'm only going to focus on the x component because if I want to, if this is in the middle, then there is a piece down here uh, with a negative y value. And that's going to make an electric, it's the same distance away, so it's going to have the same magnitude of electric field, but it's going to be in the positive y direction. And so this is in the negative y direction because this has a negative y component. Everything would be switched here except for these would be positive. And the, when I add these together, the y components of this piece and that piece are going to cancel. No matter which piece I pick along this axis, it's going to have a corresponding piece down below that's going to cancel. So I only need to worry about the x components. So let's write an expression for dex. Dex, and this is the, elect, the x component of the electric field due to this piece up here. It's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and my charge is going to be dq. R, I already said this, this, I square that, so I get x squared plus y squared. And that's it. I'm, I don't need to worry about this unit vector because the unit vector is going to be some, oh no, I do. Wait, do I? I do. I do need to worry about that. That's the magnitude of the total electric field. So to get the uh, magnitude, I do need to find this unit vector. Okay, so let's just write down the unit vector. R hat is going to be equal to the, uh, the vector R, which is uh, x negative y 0 divided by the magnitude of this, which is this x squared plus y squared. So that's the unit vector r hat. The x component of that, r hat x, is going to be equal to x divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I need to include that in here, and I get x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that is my x component of the electric field for just that piece. Okay. Now, you may have done this in another class and used uh, you know, angles and stuff like this and find the components. You're going to get the same thing. Trust me. Okay. So, but I can't, now I want to integrate by adding up all of these electric fields from L over 2 to negative L over 2. Let me switch to a piece of paper over here. So I'm going to write this. Ex equals the integral from x equals negative L over 2 to x equals L over 2 of dex dx. I'm sorry. That's wrong. I'm even, not even going to cross that out. I'm just going to throw it away. I'm not integrating in x. I'm integrating in y. So I have, let me write down my uh, dex. D E x, the x component, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq over, uh, well, I have an x. And then on the bottom, I have x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Yeah, because I had, this is 1, and that's the 1 half, and I add those together, I get 3 halves. Now, I actually can't integrate this. I want to integrate, what's changing here is my y values are changing, but I can't integrate it because I have, don't have an integration variable dy. I can't add up dy, so I need to get uh, dq in terms of dy. So if I look at this rod again, it has a total length L, a total charge Q, and then I have a little piece down here, dq. If I assume that this is uniformly distributed, then the charge to length ratio should be constant for both the short piece and the total piece. So I can say Q over L is going to be equal to DQ over the length of this. The length of this, if this is a Y value, the length of that is DY. So 
So now I can solve for dq. dq equals q over l dy. Now I can put that in up here. So I get dx, dex is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught x q over l. Uh, so let's put that q. I shouldn't have done that right. That q over l dy over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Now I can integrate. Now I can find the total x component of the electric field, ex, is going to be the integral from y equals negative l over 2 to y equals l over 2, 1 over 4 pi, epsilon naught, q over l, x dy over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Yes. Technically, I'm doing something that's very bad and, and terrible, and I'm a terrible person for doing this, and that's my uh, limits of integration. Oh, no, I think it's okay to do it that way. Why? That's fine. I'm sorry. I was thinking of an indefinite integral. Let's pull all the constants out front. Now, remember that as I'm adding up these things, I'm changing my y, but I'm not changing my x. So x is essentially a constant in this case. So I can write ex equals... 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l. I can pull that x out, x. And now all I have left is the integral from negative l over 2 to l over 2 dy over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Now, how do you integrate that? Honestly, I don't remember, and I don't have to remember. Because this is physics, this is not math, and I'm going to cheat. This is my uh, 28th edition uh, CRC math tables book. I can't remember if the first one I got. I think, is my name in this? Yep, see, I put my name in it. I got this when I was an undergraduate. So you could probably figure out how, how old I am from that. So I've already looked through this because it takes some skill to kind of find these things, right? And here is a list of a whole bunch of integrals in different forms. But look at this one. D, the integral of dx, messed up my light the integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus or minus a squared to the 3 halves. So you see, that is to the 2 thirds, right? So this is the same as to the 2 thirds power. So I'm not doing x, I'm doing y. Uh, but let's just write that down in terms of y. So I'm going to write this. The integral, I'm changing all the x's to y's. dy over the square root of, let's say, y squared plus a squared. Actually, I could go ahead and write that as x squared, right? Because I'm my a is x, so I'm going to put that as x squared uh, to the three halves equals. I'm just copying this down plus x, which is y, divided by a squared, which is x squared, times the square root of x squared, which is y squared, plus x squared. That divide with the limits. Okay, so let's do this from negative L over 2 to L over 2. And I do have that constant stuff out front. Uh, so let's just call this, um, let's call that C. So I still have the C out there. Okay, so let's evaluate this at L over 2 minus negative L over 2. So I have uh, e x equals c, and I'll put the c in uh, soon. Uh, and then I'm going to have this, so I have y is l over 2. So I have l over 2, all of that over x squared, which is my variable, uh, times the square root of l squared over 4 plus x squared. All of that minus uh, negative l over 2, so I have negative l over 2, all of that over x squared, the square root of uh, negative L over 2 squared, which is going to be L squared over 4, x squared. And you'll see here that I have minus a negative, uh, and that's C is times the whole thing. So I get C times two of these, right, because they add together. So I get L over x squared, square root of L squared over 4, plus x squared. 
Now let's put in my value for uh, C, and I get EX equals C, which is all this stuff, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over L X times all of that uh, L over X squared times the square root of L squared over 4 plus X squared. Now some things cancel, right? That cancels, that cancels. So I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over x square root of l squared over 4 plus x squared. And that's it, I think. So <clears throat> let's write that down again. Because let's do a real quick check. So let me write that answer. So here I have ex equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over x square root of L squared over 4 plus x squared. Now, let's compare that to the magnitude of the electric field due to a point charge. That's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over the magnitude of r squared. And then r, the magnitude of r hat's 1. So, I know this is true. So, this has units of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over distance squared. So does this have the same thing? I have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q, and is this distance squared? Well, here I have uh, meter squared plus meter squared is meter squared. And then I take the square root, and I get meters. And then I multiply by another meter, and I get meter squared. OK, so this does; these do have the same units. <clears throat> what about this? So units, check. Check. Uh, what about uh, L goes to zero? What if I take my rod and I let the length of it go to zero? Then it would look like a point charge, right? So up here, if L goes to zero, then I have uh, EX is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over X times the square root of X squared, and that is the same thing. So it does work. Uh, let's say, what about as x goes to infinity? If I get infinitely far away from this thing, then I should have a zero electric field. So let's put uh, x, ex is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, q over, this is good, it's going to go to infinity, and so this goes to zero, so that's good too. Okay, so we have these little checks to make sure our answer is reasonable. If, if it could still be wrong, okay, uh, but, but these don't indicate that it's wrong. So another check, another check. And that's the electric field due to a point charge. Now, there is one other variation. Um, what if L goes to infinity, and this would be like an infinitely long rod. Uh, and I'm not going to do that right now because I'm actually drawing up a blank and I've already spent 18 minutes on this video. But I, what I'd rather do is to do another problem. i do this numerically because what if I have this? Here's my charge rod and it's length L, and here's my axis. But what if I want to find the electric field right there? How can I do that? So uh, there's my RO, and I want to find E. Well, I can't do the same thing, because in this case, uh, I don't get a simple integral. Uh, the X components, I would have the same thing, the y components have something different, but it'd be a much more complicated uh, integration because it, there's not symmetry. I can still do it, uh, but I can do it numerically, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a numerical calculation of the electric field due to this rod at that location. Uh, and, and it should work also for any location right here, too. And I'll do that in another video, so I'll talk to you guys later.